Introduction This is a pool table. When the ball is hit, it moves to a certain distance and slowly comes to halt. How and why does this happen? Let's start the lesson and find answers to such questions. Objectives At the end of this lesson you will be able to Define friction, illustrate smooth and rough surfaces, describe the types of friction, discuss advantages and disadvantages of friction, illustrate the way to reduce or increase the friction. Let's take an example from daily life. While moving on a bicycle on the road, you pedal the bicycle and it moves on and on. When you stop pedaling, the bicycle slows down and gradually comes to a stop. Why does this happen? This is actually happens because of friction. Friction is a force that is created whenever two surfaces move or try to move across each other. Friction always opposes the motion or attempted motion of one surface across another surface. The force which resists the motion of a body while moving on a surface is called friction. Friction is dependent on the texture of both surfaces. Friction is also dependent on the amount of contact force pushing the two surfaces together. A simple answer to this is that, while in motion, the tires of the bicycle are rubbing against the surface of the road. When two surfaces rub on one another, the force comes into play. This force acts in the direction opposite to the direction of motion. Thus, it slows down the motion and finally brings the moving object to a stop. In figure, a ball is rolled on smooth surface and another similar ball on rough surface. As you see, here that both the ball starts rolling on different surfaces with same speed, same force and at same time. But the ball which is rolling on smooth surface travels a larger distance than the ball rolling on rough surface. This shows that the rough surfaces offer more friction than smooth surfaces for the same pair of contact surfaces. This example proves that friction depends on the texture of contact surfaces. It is interesting to learn that friction depends on the amount of contact force pushing the two surfaces together. How? Let us find out. Here a man is trying to push a heavy box. The box is not moving. Have you any idea why this happens? Well, when the box is pushed, the bottom of the box and the floor rub one another and friction comes into play which resists the motion. The force from friction is more than the push force being exerted by the man. The box will move only when a greater force than the force from friction is applied on the box. Once the box starts sliding, you may find it easier to move the box already in motion. This example proves that friction depends on the amount of contact force pushing the two surfaces together. Now we can easily define force of friction. The force of friction is a force which opposes the motion of a body in contact with the surface of another body. It acts on both the surfaces. Some surfaces are smooth and some are rough. Some are less rough and some are more rough. Even a smooth surface has some irregularities, roughness on it. For example, when we try to move one sandpaper over the other, the movement is not smooth. That means there is friction due to the interlocking of rough surfaces. But when we try to move one plain paper over the other, movement is smooth as compared to sandpaper. Thus, the roughness of sandpaper is more than that of the plain paper. So we can say that friction is produced due to the roughness of surfaces. 
Depending on the roughness of surfaces, the value of frictional force can be more or less. Summary Let us summarize what we have learned. Friction is the force which resists the motion of a body while moving on a surface. Force of friction is a force which opposes the motion of a body in contact with the surface of another body. Force of friction depends on the texture of surface and the amount of contact force.